In this video, we are going to find the limit of the function x minus 1 all squared times sine of 1 over x minus 1 all divided by sine of pi x as x tends to 1. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to our channel, and turn on post notifications. It is impossible to find the limit of this expression by simply putting x equals 1 into this fraction because then we will get 0 squared times sine of 1 over 0 all divided by 0 but that's undefined so we need to do some substitution and some algebra to find out the true limit to do this I'm going to first let a new unknown called t that's equal to x minus 1 so then when x tends to 1 this new unknown t will tend to 0. Then our limit will become the limit of the function t squared times sine of 1 over t all divided by sine of pi times t plus 1. Because as t equals x minus 1, x with an equal to t plus 1 and we're doing the limit of this fraction as t tends to 0 then I'm going to rearrange the terms for example for t squared I'm going to split into t times t in particular one of the t's should be written as 1 over the inverse of t and then multiply by sine of the inverse of t while for the denominator we write that as pi t plus pi simply expanding the parts inside the sine function then for the numerator it becomes t times the fraction sine of t inverse divided by t inverse and for the denominator I'll use the compound angle formula which we will have sine of pi t times cos pi plus cos of pi t times sine pi For the denominator, we can actually cross off this term because sine pi is 0, so this term will vanish. And for the other term, because cos pi is minus 1, so it becomes minus sine of pi t. And we keep the same numerator. Now at this point, I'm going to find out the limit of these parts separately first this fraction sine of t inverse divided by t inverse and the limit of the other parts t over sine pi t of course we can take out the minus sign put it and put it outside the limits so on one hand I need to find out this limit and this limit will be divided by the limit of sine pi t all divided by t. Now for the numerator, we can actually make another substitution which is by letting u equals t inverse so when t approaches 0, actually we have u to be approaching infinity. Then we will have the limit of the function sine u all divided by u when u tends to infinity. While for the denominator, I'm going to multiply both parts of the fraction inside the limit by pi and so we have 
pi times limit of sine pi t all divided by pi t when t tends to zero. This limit is well known because it's of the form sine of some expression all divided by the same expression and this pi t now tends to zero since t tends to zero. So the green part actually tends to one. For the, for the denominator, we have pi times one. While for the top, notice that we don't actually need any special tools, but it's just that for sine u, the top part is bounded by minus one and one. So as u tends to infinity, it won't go, go out of this range. But for the denominator, as u tends to infinity, it will grow way larger than numbers in within the range minus one and one. So the limit would definitely tends to zero. So actually the limit is simply minus zero over pi. Now that we have the numerator to be zero and the denominator to be a non-zero number, so we can conclude that the limit is exactly zero. So this is the final answer. Please feel free to share ideas in the comments. Thank you for watching. See you next time.